zapraszam na scenę Wille Wejko Pulka z Finną. I temat wystąpienia bardzo prosty. Dochód podstawowy dla Finna. Dzień dobry. Or, can I get anything to say? Yes, as already mentioned, my name is Vilove Kukulka and I work as researcher at the Finnish Social Security Institution, KELA. Uh, KELA pays the current basic security benefits for people and also leads the basic income experience study. And I'm a member of the research group that is responsible for the preparation uh, of the experiment. Uh, KELA is publicly funded course, but uh, at the same time all research departments independent, so in other words, uh, we are not working for the government, but we are making them look better with our approach. I usually start with some kind of uh, icebreaker uh, presentations, but uh, I just realized this morning that I have given approximately 30 presentations on the Finnish basic income experiment this year, which means that I'm totally out of jokes. And I made a mistake yesterday that I already praised your football club, so I'm not going to do it again today. <laughs> so I divided my presentations, presentation into three parts. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction to the background for the experiment study. Secondly, and mainly, I, I'm going to concentrate on the social findings and recommendations of the research group. And finally, I'm going to reflect a little bit this basic income work experience. So, if everything goes uh, right, we are going to start the experiment in January, on January 1st, and I just going to continue for two years. And according to the current plans, the evaluation will be in 2019, which is understandable since the next parliamentary elections will be held in uh, April 2019, so the government wants to have the results before that. The basic income itself, it's not a new idea in Finland. It has actually been discussed since the 1970s, but according to my analysis, analysis it has not been considered as a politically feasible uh, policy before the mention in the government of the one year ago. Uh, some of you may know that the Nordic welfare system, or Nordic countries, is based on the principle of universalism. Uh, this, this has meant extensive social security and also free or quasi free public services, for example, free education. Uh, what this hasn't meant is uh, it's not unconditionality, so still most of the benefits paid by KELA, for example, are means tested. Uh, one reason for that, according to my analysis, is that the social democratic welfare state has always been related in work or the society. So the idea of uh, giving people unconditional money hasn't uh, received that much uh, support. Uh, likewise, in many, many other Western well, first states, also the Finland's local activation policies, which were already mentioned in the last uh, presentation, have been implemented since the mid-1990s. These, these activation policies has meant uh, stricter sanctions and open cases, especially for unequal people. But this is one reason why just few, few people expected that the basic income experience would be launched by a central right coalition government that is in power right now. Our work, our study on the basic income uh, experiment was, uh, was and is still based on the assignment uh, handed down by the Prime Minister's office. Uh, this assignment uh, outlined four different options to explore and leave alone. The first option is so called full basic income, which means Basic income model that's good to replace all the other benefits, perhaps excluding uh, earnings related benefits which are at quite high level in Finland. Uh, the second choice uh, was so called parcel basic income, which means basic income model which could replace most of the basic security benefits but left uh, earning related benefit intact. 
This is usually the mode in which people meet when they talk about basic income in Finland. The third choice was negative income tax. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the idea, but uh, it basically means income transfers by taxation system, and according to our micro simulations, it seems that the effects at both micro and macro level would be the same as in a basic income scheme. We were also given a chance to study other possible models for the experiment, but uh, and we studied, for example, the British new British social security system called universal credit, and also the idea popularized by Anthony Atkins and so-called participation income, but. Uh, due to the conditionality of these schemes, we need to recover these models for the government to test. So, in this assignment handed down by the Prime Minister's office, there was one, one main target to emphasize, and this was uh, diminishing these incentives in social security. In other words, to see if, if a basic income scheme could increase employment. Unemployment trade in Finland is currently 9.8 or approximately 10 percent, uh, so it is. Uh, it is. Uh, we can say that the unemployment problem is a serious one in Finland currently. Uh, at the same time, even though basic income is by definition unconditional uh, benefit, benefit, and it could be interpreted. interpreted as a paradigm shift, I argue that the target is still the same to increase employment by emphasizing labor supply. At the uh, same time with this experiment, our government is uh, implementing new sanctions and obligations for unemployed people, so this is why we should consider this uh, as a paradigm shift. Uh, the, the traps in the current social security system were already mentioned. In the last presentation, or also Jurgen's presentation, and uh, the, the reason uh, where these, these uh, traps result from is that there are numbers of means tested benefits paid in addition to each other. And if you start to work, they are diminished by some grade. These, uh, these, these incentives can be divided into two categories. First are the economic these incentives, and secondly, there are also so the bureaucracy traps. The economic incentives could be also divided into two parts. Firstly, unemployment traps, which means that the person has uh, dis economic disincentives to participate in labor market. The indicator for unemployment traps is sort of participation tax rate, which means how much your gross salary is diminished by uh, the taxes, uh, lost benefits, and uh, Possible service charges. Like, uh, and uh, secondly, we can also talk about income traps, which means economic disincentives to increase workload. Uh, the indicator for this is uh, effective marginal tax rate, and if this, this uh, indicator is uh, higher than 70%, uh, you are considered to be an income trap. Uh, the psychological traps, uh, which are called in Finnish discourse uh, bureaucracy traps, uh, results from the different uh, reporting uh, obligations, uh, also that the, you may even fall through the social security net if you go into self-employment. And especially if you want to work on a part-time basis, then, then it's, it may be complicated because of the means test of the system. So that's just the findings. We, we released a preliminary study um, the Finnish experiment, so how, how the experiment should be carried out. Uh, this uh, report was uh, published on 30th March 2016, so a few months ago. Well, it was quite clear from the beginning that the full based income scheme would be too expensive and politically too difficult to test, uh, since the flat rate taxes are, according to our simulation, at quite relatively quite high level. For 1,000 euros, which is approximately 4,000 spotties, uh, the flat rate tax would be 60% and for uh, 1,500 euros basic income, the flat rate tax would be 79%. Uh, 
Uh, of course, if there, if there was money reform or other components would be included, taxation these levels would be at lower lower level. But uh, we didn't have a political mandate to create any creative uh, taxation system. So these are the facts we received from our market simulations. Well, negative income tax, since it would not be paid for everyone, it would be paid just for the people who had it earned themselves their politically determined minimum income, it might have been a more feasible choice to test. But since, since uh, especially since uh, it was uh, shown in the negative income tax experiments in the US that people might under-report their income, it would uh, produce biased results. Uh, in 2019 or 2020, we are going to have a new digital system and um, real-time access for the income of people. And with this kind of system, we, we might be possible to consolidate better the work income and other incomes. But before that, it wouldn't be uh, scientifically reliable to test negative income tax in Finland. It is often argued that the basic income would always make work pay, but according to our micro simulations, it seems budget neutral, which means that no no one's uh, net income is not allowed to no one's income net income is allowed to change drastically. Uh, it seems that this kind of partially based income model does not automatically remove the economic disincentives. The reason for that are the relatively high flat rate taxes and the benefits which cannot be replaced. These kind of benefits are, for example, housing allowance, additional social assistance, and earnings related benefits. So, pretty much the core fact is that strengthening economic work incentives cost or means diluting the current level of social security. Then, on the other hand, bureaucracy traps can be hard and solved. Even though there would be still some other means tested benefits in addition to basic income, there would be less delays reporting and falling to the social security. Net. So how would you produce reliable results on basic income? Uh, we recommend for the government that there should be two prompt and conclusive randomization of people. First priority is nationwide, so that we can have a representative sample and also produce generalizable results. This could be combined with a more intensive regional sample, which would produce uh, some information and possible externalities, so how people work if more people in certain area receives the basic income. A way that sample would be also possible, which means that if uh, it's politically decided that okay, we want to we want to study some certain group, we, we could have more people from this group in the sample. For example, self employed people might be this kind of group. According to our power calculations, it seems that a sample of 10,000 people would be necessary in order to observe statistically significant results if, if employment, char if employment changes to personal points. Our budget for two years is 20 million, which means it suffices just for approximately 4,800 people if the basic income was 550 euros a month. In other words, this means that a bigger budget would be, of course, necessary, but currently we don't know if we are able to get more money for the experience. Studying the entire adult population would be, of course, uh, reasonable, but due to the limited budget, we recommend to focus on low-income low income earners and exclude people under 25 years old. Uh, the reason for this is that if and when we use the benefits currently based or provided by Kela, it means that we can uh, increase the sampling size a lot if we include, uh, exclude these kind of groups which do not receive benefits right now. So the model which we recommended for the test is the partial basic income 
and we've been it should be minimum 550 a month. Uh, why do you think the, it would be the most realistic option to succeed at that both micro and macro level it would be the most feasible option? And this also corresponds to the monthly net level of the basic security benefits which are provided by Kelly. Well, we did some new calculations and it seems that uh, the levels should be, the minimum levels should be a little bit higher. So our current recommendation is 600 euros plus a possible child compensation. Our model would not replace earnings related benefits, housing allowance or additional social assistance. Likewise, in the USA in the 60s and the 70s, uh, there would be different levels of basic income and tax rates to observe the better dynamics of basic income models. So this is how an ideal research setting might look like. This is not the final setting, but this, this is what we have been recommending. So, at least two different levels of basic income and at least two different levels of tax rates. And perhaps also applying the current taxation would be awesome. There are of course legal preconditions to tackle if we are, if we are to uh, start the experiment next January. And especially the constitution of Finland, as uh, Jürgen already mentioned, the principle of non-discrimination, it may limit the number of models we can test and it may also set conditions for the sampling. So we, we don't actually know yet if the obligatory sample is possible or does it need to be, be on a voluntary basis. The Finnish constitution uh, currently is also the right to basic subsistence. So even though we know that the Strengthening economic work incentives would be possible by diluting the current level of social security, it seems, and we don't recommend that the level should be diluted since uh, the constitution of Finland is quite restricted in this sense. And of course, also poverty and income hardships would be if the current level would be uh, at lower level than current. In the last result, it will be the Constitutional Committee, committee that decides if we can start the uh, experiment next year. And this, this will happen according to my information, uh, perhaps in November. So there is of course the EU law and the question when a person uh, becomes eligible for a basic income when he or she moves to Finland and also the question if you move up road, will you be eligible for the benefit? Well, in the, in the test, test design, this is not a serious question, but if, if the basic income would be implemented, uh, then this question should be also studied. But right now it seems that the, the difference, difference uh, in comparison to the current system is not as serious what some people may think. So then some reflections. Well, it's, it's, it's clear that an experiment of two years won't reveal any universal truth about the dynamics of basic income. Two years uh, won't, won't change the behavior of people in comparison to the situation that the basic income scheme would be implemented in the whole country. Everybody would be eligible for it. I'm a little bit skeptical if uh, basic income can improve employment that much, since we know, according to Finnish empirical studies, that the effect of removing work incentives on the elasticity of labor has been relatively moderate. However, at the same time, I think that an experiment is the only way to have reliable results on the elasticity of labor supply in the days of the scheme. And of course, in addition to employment, I want to emphasize this, that there are also other important indicators which should be studied. For example, health issues, subjective well-being, perhaps educational attainment and things which, which we should and which we, which we will study in experience. 
One one reason why our government is now willing to test the basic income scheme is that they are also promoting the so-called evidence-based policy, as you have mentioned earlier. I think this is a uh, this good um, good for the political cultures and states. Political this is made more transparent and more innovative if if politicians would listen to the researchers and. Uh, and the empirical facts more than they do these days. The possible threat of technological in unemployment was already discussed, and that's also a topic for my PhD research. According to my analysis, it doesn't seem certain that there will be mass unemployment in the coming decades. At the same time, it doesn't seem certain that it will be a capitalism as usual scenario that we will face. What, what looks certain is that the labor markets will be more insecure in the coming decades. And it is sure that insecurity in labor markets is, is an important reason why this topic will be discussed also in coming years, and also after the Finnish experiment. And I think for this reason it is uh, important that we, we have some empirical, empirical data how, how basic income affects our people. I have tried to learn to thank you in Polish for several years, but it's, it's too difficult for me, so I will thank you in Finnish. So, Peter's father and Thank you.